Hoffa arrived in the world of Harry Potter, filled with joy as he thought he could catch a glimpse of the legendary wizard. However, he found himself in 1938, becoming a classmate of Voldemort and a student of Dumbledore. Where is my Hermione? Where is my Iron Triangle? Non-existent. Not only that, he also had to complete seven years of magic training under the coercion of the compulsory education system. When Hugh O.F.A. finally woke up, he realized that he was not here to witness the legend, he was here to become a legend. Keywords of the novel. Harry Potter's, I am the legend, without a pop-up window, Harry Potter's, I am the legend, complete collection download, Harry Potter's, I am the legend, latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Oliver Twist. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. Oliver Twist. The waves of the Thames hit the rocks, rolling up layers of waves. The sky was mottled in the gloomy fog, and in the distance, the towering Big Ben stood amidst the thick industrial smoke, no different from 50 years later. In 1938, Wu's Orphanage in London. This is a square, gloomy and old-fashioned building. The origin of the orphanage is unknown. Some say it was to help children who died in World War I, while others say it was a place where medieval churches imprisoned black death inmates. The diverse origins of opinions only indicate one thing. This place is very dilapidated. Dense electrical wires were tangled in the sky, and houses were haphazardly stacked on the grey stone ground, lacking any beauty. A large iron gate completely separates this place from the busy streets outside. The ground is filled with foul-smelling white smoke, and the rusted manhole cover is flipping out with water vapor. Even rainwater can clog in front of the sewer. The room in the basement of the orphanage. A little boy with tightly closed eyes seemed to be sleeping. He is only about 11 years old, with short black hair and pale skin. His face, which has a hint of mixed blood, is quite delicate, but his swollen forehead has completely damaged his appearance. He lay in bed, twitching from time to time, as if enduring immense pain. Dong dong. Outside the door, there was a polite knocking, but the boy did not wake up. After a while, dong dong dong, the knocking on the door was louder. Huofa woke up from a nightmare and suddenly stood up to stroke his head and crotch. After discovering that there were no missing parts, he breathed a sigh of relief. I am still alive. Snatching his nose, he smelled a sour and moldy smell. In front of me is not a scene of an exploding cinema, but a dirty and dark room. Huofa looked at his palm in shock, fair and thin. Suddenly, a severe pain surged up from the forehead. He rolled his eyes and fell straight down again, feeling a bit anxious when he heard the knocking on the door outside. I don't know how long it took, but Hover slowly recovered from the pain. He has an extra memory in his mind that doesn't belong to him at all. He is still called Hover now, but he is no longer the Hover on Earth. The Hover on Earth is an ordinary high school student from China, living alone. No house, no car, no money. My only hobby is saving money to buy books, watch movies, and so on. But just as he was watching an IMAX movie, the cinema suddenly exploded and he arrived at this haunted place. His full name now is Hoffa Bark. He is a child who grew up in an ordinary orphanage. Some remaining memories told him that the original owner of this body was tricked into going to a cave by the seaside during a picnic organized by the orphanage, fell off a cliff, and fell into the cold seawater. After being carried back to the orphanage, Hugh O.F.A. was already on the brink of death, which allowed him to take advantage of the situation and enter. All that this child remembers is the streets of London overflowing with sewage. Besides that, he has never been to any other place. 
I don't know what phones and computers are, nor do I know about the internet. He has only seen old cars emitting black smoke on the street, and black umbrellas can be seen everywhere. Hover thought hard, trying to scrape some survival-friendly information from his shattered memory. Shaking his head, some scattered memory fragments surged up again. The father of this generation was actually a native Chinese, who came to Europe to avoid war but died as a guest in a foreign land during World War I. The Bark surname after his name is probably related to a foreign mother. It's just that Hover has no memories of his mother in his mind. Orphans. They've actually crossed over. Quote. Hugh O.F.A. rubbed his head and exhaled a cloud of air. He doesn't care about time travel. After all, he doesn't have much to worry about in his past life. But the starting template is a bit outdated. He looked more carefully at the surroundings. A dirty bed, a broken wooden table, and several faded soldier posters on the wall. There is also a short blue cat hanging from the ceiling. That's right. The cat hung straight and hard from the ceiling, feeling extremely miserable. Hoffa's mind was filled with the name of this cat. Adu. It is the best friend of its former owner. Inexplicable anger appeared in his heart, and Hugh O.F.A. developed an extreme sense of disgust. Who was it? To hang an innocent and pitiful cat here, or in front of its owner? I haven't had time to wait for him to flip through the culprit from his memory. A soft tapping sound and the sound of keys opening the door rang outside the door. Clack. Suddenly, the tightly closed door popped open as if someone had kicked it hard. Hover was frightened and took a step back. There are two people standing outside the door, one male and one female. He was very familiar with the woman. Hoffa recalled her identity from memory when he saw her. It's Mrs. Cole. The administrator of the Wu family orphanage is a skinny and always anxious woman. And beside her stood a very unexpected visitor. This is a strange old gentleman. Hover can only think so. Because this person's attire is out of place with the environment here. He has blue eyes and a long nose, which seems to have been broken. He had a long reddish brown beard and neatly tied hair, dressed in a sophisticated velvet suit, holding a cane and top hat in his hand. Hover had no doubt that the clothes were custom made on Savile Street, but what surprised him the most was not the attire of this old gentleman, but rather his beard and hair, he always felt that this person looked a bit strange and familiar. Tom, someone is coming to see you. Mrs. Cole, who was thin and bony, said casually, but then she jumped up like a cat with its tail stepped on. Wait a minute. Why are you? Hover. Did he steal your room? Quote. Huofa was still thinking about who the familiar old man in front of him was, and he didn't react to Mrs. Cole's words for a while. The old man had already walked into the room, looked around, and sighed in front of the hanging cat. Standing in front of Hover again, a pair of deep blue eyes under his long nose calmly looked at Hover. Then he extended his long fingers and gently stroked the bruises on Hoffa's skull. Poor child. Quote. A feeling of healing came from the wound on his forehead, and a lightning bolt flashed through Hoffa's mind. He looked incredulously at the door sign on the room. It is written in crooked English. Tom Mavoro Riddle. Holy crap ha ha. The world of Harry Potter. I am Voldemort. Hoffa's brain was a bit confused for a moment, but soon he realized he was overthinking. He was Hoffa himself, just staying in Voldemort's room, and as for the reason, he immediately knew from his memory. This is an orphanage, and in his past life, he was a well-behaved child who was loved by the orphanage administrator. His room is on the first floor and can be exposed to sunlight. And Tom's room is in the basement. Tom Riddle, 
also known as the young Voldemort, coveted his room and tricked him into a cave. After an unsuccessful attempt, he pushed Hoffer off the cliff. Without much time to lament the tragic experiences of his predecessor, worldview, era, stories. Various diverse information flooded his brain, and Hoffer's eyes widened wider and wider. The old man helped Hugh O.F.A. treat his wound slightly, then turned to look at Mrs. Cole and sighed lightly, take me to see Tom. Korf nodded and prepared to take him away. The two walked to the door, and Hugh O.F.A. finally reacted. He pointed to the old man's back and almost blurted it out. Deng. Deng. Deng disadvantageous. Quote. Dumbledore, with a reddish-brown beard, turned around in surprise, wrinkled his head several times, and his blue eyes widened. The air is a bit quiet. Hugh O.F.A. quickly covered his mouth. Damn it. I'm still not careful enough. Shocked. I couldn't control my mouth. You should know that the other party is the world's top wizard and there are a hundred ways to expose their secrets. Spit medicine, heart-wrenching curse. Although he thought Dumbledore might disdain using those methods, being careful was always right. If one is discovered to have taken it from him, heaven knows what this mysterious magical world will do to oneself. But Dumbledore had no intention of letting Hoffa go. He asked softly, have we ever met before? Hugh O.F.A. covered his mouth and shook his head into a tambourine. How do you know my name? Speaking, Dumbledore took a step forward. Hover took a step back. Dumbledore remained dumbfounded as he politely turned his head to the Coleman and said, Just a moment. I want to talk to this child alone for a while. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Minus 2. Butterfly Wings. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 to 2. Butterfly Wings. In 1938, Dumbledore was not yet the principal of Hogwarts. At that time, he was just a deformation class teacher at Hogwarts, around 50 years old. But it was this year that he did a trivial thing, which completely changed the future of the wizarding world. He recruited the future demon Lord Voldemort into Hogwarts, opening the way for Tom Mavoro Riddle to pursue his ambitions. Hover has read the original novel and was once one of its fans. But he never imagined that he would travel to this world after death, even to England in 1938, and as soon as he woke up, he fell in love with one of the super popular wizards in this world. He didn't know what this meant. But after Mrs. Cole left the room, Hoffer had already retreated to the corner. He looked at Dumbledore, afraid that he would be distracted by himself or forget everything. Neither outcome was acceptable to him, as he had just experienced death and memory chaos, and his nerves were still in a fragile and tense state. But Dumbledore didn't do that. Obviously, there was only a bright light in his eyes. He is very interested in the children in this orphanage who can name themselves. He didn't rush to talk to Hover, but untied the cat hanging above his head and leaned against the broken table in the room, smiling at Hover. Muggles won't know my name, Hoffer. Quote. He has memorized Hoffer's name. Oh. Hover replied dryly. He was just a young man who had lived for more than a decade in his past life and Dumbledore is now at least 56 years old. Faced with an old wizard who has lived for so many years, he has no sense of superiority. You didn't ask me what Muggle is. Quote. Dumbledore stared happily at Hoffer with blue eyes and said, What's your full name, Hoffer? Hoffer bark. Hoffer sighed and decided to tell the truth. In the face of such a level of existence, he can only play an honest child well. Bark. Sounds like a family from the French side. Dumbledore pondered for a moment. Then he took out his wand and lay it flat on his knee. 
Hover instinctively shrank, his eyes secretly wary, as he had recovered from the initial shock. Now he just wants to invite Dumbledore to leave early and organize his thoughts. Face a brand new life well. Dumbledore keenly sensed Hoffa's fear. So he lifted his wand and pointed it at Hoffa. Hugh O'Farr's alert expression in his eyes was strong, and he took a step back, tightly pressing against the corner of the wall. What is he going to do? What is Dumbledore going to do to me? Are you coming? Forgetting curse. Dementor's curse. His heart was in turmoil. Just when he was extremely nervous. Bang. A glass on the table suddenly exploded, as if responding to Hoffa's nervousness. Then, Puzzy, accompanied by a burst sound resembling a low-quality horn, it was like a cheap Halloween salute. Dumbledore's wand emitted several ribbons, drifting down from the sky in a soft and gentle manner, accompanied by a few scattered rays of light, landing on Hoffa's face. Hugh O.F.A. stared at the corner of the wall, letting the ribbon fall and hang on his head. What is the situation? There is no such play in the original work. What should I do? Dumbledore coughed lightly and put away his wand, muttering, Am I that scary? Hover remained silent. He looked at the cup on the table and then at Dumbledore's cheerful expression. Completely speechless. Did Busbarton send you an invitation letter? Hover. Hover silently shook his head. I see. I know. Hover didn't know what he knew. Closing parenthesis. Speaking. He stood up and put his top hat on his head, gently speaking to Hoffer. Perhaps you should change your environment. By the way, I also really like short-haired cats. Find a better environment and bury this little one. After speaking, he blinked slightly at Hover and turned around to walk out of the door. After Dumbledore left, Hoffer slowly sat down against the corner of the wall. For a while, his brain went down a bit, and it took him a while to finally determine his coordinates in time and space. In London, England in 1938, there was an orphanage with Tom Riddle. And what Dumbledore needs to do now is to enroll the future Dark Lord. Not long after, Hover heard a slight clicking sound coming from upstairs, like a nest of mice gnawing on a table. The sound was so subtle that it could not be heard without careful listening. But that's not a mouse, Hover knows what's going on. In 1938, when Dumbledore recruited 11-year-old Tom Riddle into Hogwarts, he expressed dissatisfaction with Tom's bullying of other children. At this moment, he suppressed Tom with a burning wardrobe and forced the future Demon King to confess for the only time in his life. The story of Harry Potter is very long, but if we really want to say it, perhaps this is the true beginning of the entire story. After all, if Tom Riddle had not entered Hogwarts, he would not have become Voldemort. If Voldemort had not killed Harry Potter's parents, nothing would have happened afterwards. And now, this historic moment is happening above my own head. A faint conversation came from upstairs. A certain boy. I don't have money. Quote. Dumbledore. That's easy to solve. Hogwarts has a fund specifically for those who need funding to buy textbooks and school gowns. Some of your magic books may only be second-hand, but... Boy, where can I buy a magic book? Quote, Dumbledore said, at Diagon Alley, I brought your book list and school supplies list. I can help you buy everything. Boy, are you going with me? Dumbledore, of course, if you... Boy, I don't need to. Five minutes later... The conversation ended and the sound of closing the door rang upstairs. Just as Hoffer thought the first meeting between Dumbledore and Voldemort would end like this, Dumbledore's voice came down again. By the way, the child you took away from the room is also a wizard. If you are familiar with London, 
I hope you can help him. Tom Riddle let out a mocking laugh and said, Hoffa, just him. Dumbledore stopped answering and closed the door to leave. Downstairs, after listening to all of this, Hugh O.F.A. collapsed completely on the bed, unsure whether he should cry or laugh. There is no doubt that he has a talent for magic. Just now, Dumbledore tested his talent in a completely unexpected way. No matter what the novel looks like, Dumbledore is now much stronger and sharper than he imagined, perhaps because he is younger now. And Voldemort was far more terrifying than he had imagined, as his predecessor had already died. Killed by Tom Riddle, who was only 11 years old, just for a room. If Dumbledore knew he was facing an 11-year-old murderer, he probably wouldn't have recruited him to Hogwarts. Lying on the bed in a big font, he sighed. Hoffa habitually wants to take out his mobile phone and send a WeChat message, roast about the reality. But when he touched his pocket, he smiled even more bitterly. There are still more than 70 years left until Steve Jobs releases the Apple IV, and that guy is probably still a single-celled organism. He might have given up the idea of playing with his phone. After organizing his thoughts, Hover picked up the cat that had been hung by Tom Riddle and dug a pit in the corner of the orphanage to bury it. Looking at the small pebbles piled up in front of him, Hugh O.F.A. pressed his chest and whispered, I will live well with your share. Not long after, the sound of cooking came from the orphanage. Hover adjusted his mentality and his gloomy expression disappeared. I have a natural talent for magic and am likely to enter Hogwarts to study. Isn't this exactly what I dreamed of in my past childhood? Since that's the case, what else can be complained about? There is only a slightly yellowed piece of white bread, two slices of bacon, half a broccoli, and a glass of orange juice in the plate. This was Hoffa's first meal in London in 1938. The food in the orphanage is not very good. It can only be considered as a way to prevent children from starving. In addition, British chefs are known for being perfunctory, and Hoffa feels that the bacon in his mouth is fried exceptionally old. But before he could barely swallow the bacon in his mouth, a plate was heavily placed across from Hoffa. Damn. Hover looked up with half a bacon in his mouth. A tall boy with black hair, pale skin, and a very handsome appearance. At least Hover believed that he was much more handsome than his own appearance in this lifetime. I belong to the kind of ordinary neighbor boy, while the other person is the kind of handsome person who can attract scouts by growing up and walking on the street. Your forehead is doing quite well, Hover. The boy squinted his eyes and whispered, as if looking at some novel toy. Without a doubt, the handsome boy in front of him is the famous Tom Mavoro riddle. Like a fake package exchange. The most powerful dark wizard in the history of European magic, Voldemort. Fifty years later, his name cannot be mentioned by anyone. Hover hates him very much. No one would like a child who dares to kill at the age of 11 and does anything for the sake of their goals. And this child won't repent at all. But Hover was not afraid of the other party. At this moment, he was not Voldemort, no matter how awesome he was, he was just a child. He swallowed the bacon in his mouth and slowly stood up. Get lost, Tom. Quote, Hugh O.F.A. said calmly, his momentum is completely unbeatable to the other party. Tom was taken aback for a moment, then his face suddenly turned pale. A hint of red light flashed in his eyes, making him look like a ferocious beast. But immediately, something unexpected happened to Hover. He didn't rush over to beat himself, nor did he cast any magic, but instead smiled and leaned closer to his head as if his previous brutality was just an illusion. You and I are the same kind of person, Hover. 
He pointed to the children next to him who were having dinner and whispered, people who are different from these fools. Hugh O.F.A. was shocked. He can only say that after all, he is a young Voldemort, the future generation of heroes. This kind of mentality is completely incomparable to an ordinary child. The front foot pushed himself off the cliff, while the back foot established a relationship with him. No wonder future generations can pull up such a huge team of Death Eaters. To be honest, if it weren't for knowing a little about the future direction, I'm afraid I would have been confused by his infectious smile. Tom, if you're willing to be my friend, I can take you to a magical place. After speaking, he even smiled and extended his left hand to hover. But Hover just sneered at the palm hanging in the air. I will go to Hogwarts myself, but I won't hold a dirty hand that kills innocent animals. As soon as he finished speaking, Tom Riddle's small face was filled with hatred. All the light bulbs on the ceiling of the orphanage flickered, and the air suddenly tightened. Orange juice burst from all the children's plates next to them, crying loudly. Huofa frowned, experiencing a strong magical wave. Although he has not yet been exposed to magic, he has only felt the terrifying talent in the other person through instinct. Huofa's face was pale, but he never retreated. He was just an ordinary person in his past life. But he is also an ordinary person with his own persistence. Not to mention that this person is destined to fail. Even if he succeeds, Hover will never hold the other person's hand. Retract the palm. The light bulb on the ceiling has returned to normal. Mrs. Cole ran into the hall in panic and comforted the crying child. At this moment, Tom has returned to his normal state. I'll look at you, Hover, he said lightly before turning and leaving. It was said calmly but the killing intent was blatant and unabashed. Hugh O.F.A. snorted lightly, shook his head, and threw the remaining bacon from the plate into his mouth. On the first day of rebirth, I offended the Black Demon King. What a great death. To be honest, Hover doesn't like to offend people. The traditional Eastern education in his past life taught him the importance of being Loki in life, but it was precisely because of this that he couldn't wait to distance himself from Voldemort. Standing in line and making a big fortune silently is the king's way. Like him, with great ambition, he openly opposes the world. Even if one's talent is 100 times stronger, it is still a consequence of being killed by someone, even without Harry Potter. Thinking of this, Hugh O.F.A. couldn't help but shiver again. Although Voldemort was destined to fail, he did not want to be a sacrifice in the Wizarding War. Now is not the time when Harry was born, even his father was not born. I simply can't use the protagonist's aura to follow behind the savior. Not to mention understanding historical trends and picking up loopholes everywhere. What Philosopher's Stone, what Chamber of Secrets, what Prisoners of Azkaban, those are all things from half a century ago. Now my eyes are black. The road ahead is chaotic. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Broken Cauldron Bar. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3. Broken Cauldron Bar. Tom Riddle did not come to trouble Hoffer. In fact, after receiving an invitation from Hogwarts, he appeared unusually low-key. Huofa is not foolish enough to trouble the other party. All he has to do is eat, exercise, and familiarize himself with the environment. A month later, Hover basically wandered around the area around the orphanage. He also figured out the approximate location of the broken cauldron bar. At this moment, Hoffer is holding a paper map of London and walking towards the broken cauldron bar. He wore a worker's hat on his head and the socks on Martin's boots were dirty. 
dressed up like a child labourer selling newspapers. The streets of London in 1938 were not as bustling as they were in later times. The roads here were paved with grey bricks, with potholes. On the road, some old cars with canopies were driving past, emitting black exhaust fumes. They are monotonous in colour, completely different from the colourful cars of later generations. Many people who can't eat enough are waving job search signs around, and some decadent young people are smoking on the street corner. This is the aftermath of the economic crisis in 1929 and the decline of the empire, which never sets, was evident after World War I. At the corner of the street, Hover saw a group of workers smoking pipes and holding paste while painting the wall. He approached and saw that these people were posting black and white posters of the British royal conscription. Seeing this poster, Hoffer's heart suddenly cooled. At this point in time, he forgot the most important thing. This matter does not come from the wizarding world, but from the muggle world. That means the Second World War is about to break out. Hillet is still alive. A large number of demon-level characters from the same period are all alive. Hideki Tojo, Mussolini. Compared to the yet-to-grow dark wizard Voldemort, these guys are a genuine group of demon kings. The destruction and slaughter caused by Voldemort may not be as much as a fraction of others. Hoffer doesn't know much about history, but he knows that World War II began in 1939, and it's only a year away from now. After seeing this poster, Hoffer was stunned on the spot with the map in hand. He felt like crying without tears. Thief! What era is not good? Why must we come to this era of war? Doodle doodle. The sound of the car horn pulled Hover back from his lost state. He turned around and saw an old-fashioned motorcycle coming over. The last time he saw that kind of motorcycle was in an anti-Japanese drama. It's the kind of motorcycle that one person drives and one person sits in the bucket. Two soldiers dressed in dark green stopped in front of Hoffer while a smoking soldier lay in the truck and asked loudly, Is it Hoffa Bark? Quote, Hugh O.F.A. was taken aback for a moment, looking at the two young soldiers in confusion. He thought to himself, I don't know these two guys, can't I? He nodded and said, It's me. Quote, Suddenly, the soldier sitting on the truck pulled out a stack of tied-up letters from behind. He dipped himself in saliva, flipped through them, and then took out a piece to hand to Hoffer. Take your letter, little one, and don't lose it. After speaking, the soldier driving stepped on the pedal and the motorcycle drove away with a beep. Hugh O.F.A. turned the letter in surprise. London. Bonington Market Street. 532 meters west of the Broken Cauldron Bar. Second corner. Received by Mr. Hoffer Bark. As in the novel, the characters were written in emerald green ink, without any stamps, and held in hand with a thick, parchment-like texture. Hoffer opened his mouth wide and looked at the two soldiers who had already disappeared before flipping through the letters. I saw a wax seal, a shield decoration, and a lion, an eagle, a badger, and a snake surrounded by the capital letter, H. Well, although Dumbledore had predicted that he would receive a letter after telling him that day, he had no idea it was in this situation. He looked up at the sky and was extremely puzzled. How exactly do these guys position themselves so accurately? Putting aside his doubts, Hugh O.F.A. excitedly opened the letter. He had fantasized countless times in his past life that today had become a reality, which made him unable to be more excited. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Principal. Armando Dippet, Vice President of the International Federation of Wizards, Royal Honorary Wizards, Chief Wizards of Wisengamo. Dear Mr. Bark. 
We are pleased to inform you that you have been granted permission to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find attached a list of required books and equipment. The semester is scheduled to start on September 1st. We will be waiting for your owl to bring you a reply before July 31st. Vice President. Adba Goshik. Greetings. Hover flipped through this piece of paper several times. Without a doubt, the letter was the same as in the novel, but completely different. In this letter, he received three pieces of information. Firstly, his principal was not Dumbledore, but a man named Armando Dippet. Two ideographic comma the vice principal is not Maleva McGonagall, but a stranger named Adebe Goshik. Three ideographic comma the muggle world is not completely separated from the wizarding world, at least within the royal family. Some people are aware of the existence of the wizarding world. For example, the two soldiers just now are very likely to be wizards. Otherwise, I wouldn't have calmly handed this strange letter to myself. Of course, the possibility of them being cursed cannot be ruled out. However, upon seeing the title of Honorary Wizard of the Empire by Principal Armando Dippet, Hover felt that his previous speculation was more accurate. It's not surprising that the information held by people at the top of the world is definitely higher than that of ordinary people. With such a large group of wizards, without the cooperation of Muggles' top management, it is impossible to completely conceal the traces of the existence of wizards with just a ministry of magic. He secretly jotted down the information he had received, and Hover pulled out a second page of paper. This page appears very ordinary, only recording some essential textbooks and props for Hogwarts which is very similar to what I saw in my previous life. But after reading it all, Hugh O.F.A. was a wake-up call. He remembered something very important. That's because he doesn't have money. Yes. He is truly in a state of extreme poverty, one poor and two white. All meals are supported by the orphanage. There is no property left for oneself by deceased parents let alone knowing where to apply for Hogwarts Poverty Fund, and even no relative like Uncle Vernon in this world. He can't ask the people in the orphanage for money to study at Hogwarts, they are all pitiful people, and it's already not easy for them to support themselves so much. Standing on the streets of London in 1938, Hoffer felt a chill on his body as he was blown by the cold wind of reality. A penny can't defeat a hero. Even a traveler feels extremely helpless at this moment. Do you want this, boss? To give hope and shatter it. Hover sighed to himself and put the letter in his pocket. I have no choice but to go to Hogwarts. It was his childhood dream in his past life. Even if it's begging and working. He also wants to scrape together the tuition fees. Gritting his teeth. Hover walked towards the broken cauldron bar. If you want to beg for food and work, you also need to go to the wizarding world to beg. After all, the wizarding world of Jingalong Muggle does not have it. The only good news is that he already knows the specific location of the broken kettle bar on the envelope. The broken cauldron bar is now located in the center of a suit shop and an umbrella shop surrounded by muggles walking around, ignoring it. Hover carried the map in his pocket and walked in step. This legendary bar, as described in the book, is black and dilapidated, with a mix of good and bad. A drinking wizard, a smoking witch, and a few creatures resembling fairies were playing cards in the corner. The table was piled with coins. The only difference is that the boss in front of the counter is not so hunchbacked and old. Although the Mediterranean on his head has already shown his fate of hair problems, at least for now he is not bald. On the walls of the bar, rows of black oil paintings stand out. Everyone in the oil painting can move. Hover slowly looked over and at the end of the oil painting group, 
he saw an old woman's oil painting. In the painting, she is wearing a wooden hair clip and smoking a pipe, resembling a landlady. She saw Hover and spat out smoke viciously. What are you looking at, little poor guy? Quote. Hover pursed his lips and frowned. I can only see it below the oil painting. Broken Cauldron Bar. Founded by Daisy Dodrick. 1467-1555. Hover didn't want to argue with an oil painting, so he came to the counter of his boss Tom's bar. Young boss Tom is currently wiping his glass in front of the bar. He just looked up at Hover who pushed the door in and didn't bother anymore. Hoffer thought of the grandeur of Harry Potter's first entry into a bar in the future, and compared to his own predicament of being ignored, he could only marvel at how popular people are. I really don't have the legendary protagonist aura. He eagerly glanced at the golden garron in the hands of several card-playing fairies, and then walked straight to the bar. The bar was very high, and Hugo F.A. had to stand on tiptoe and cough softly. Hello. Hello, Tom, the owner of the bar, responded neither warmly nor coldly, it was just ordinary. Hugo F.A. I want to ask, do you recruit workers here? Tom finally put down his wiping of the cup and looked at Hoffer with a hint of surprise. What are you saying? Hugo F.A. Excuse me. I'm looking for a job. A short-term one. Tom exclaimed in surprise. Merlin's beard. Would wizarding children come out to look for jobs at such a young age now? Quote. Hugo F.A. was crazy. But the situation was stronger than humans. He could only sigh and say, there's no way, isn't this an economic crisis outside? Quote, Tom grinned and shook his head, saying, I'm sorry, we don't hire child labor here. After saying that, he turned to the other side of the table and continued to clean the glass. Hugh O.F.A. didn't give up, so he also followed over and said, wait a moment. Do you know there are any other recruitment shops in Diagon Alley? Tom was unhappy. He frowned and put down the cloth heavily. Hey, you kid, if you don't go to Hogwarts well, why do adults come out to find jobs? Do you think work is that simple? Quote, holy crap Huofer cursed in his heart. Do you think I don't want to go? If I had money, how could I have a hot face and a cold buttocks? How could this old man be so snobbish? When he saw Harry Potter, he was so enthusiastic. Seeing himself was like seeing a plague god, and he wished he could go out. Tom's voice attracted several wizards to look over, and one of them, a tall and hunchbacked witch, turned around and smoked a pipe, smiling and asking, little guy, are you really short of money? Do you want to go down the alley with your sister and take a look? Before he could finish speaking, Hover quickly replied, No need. Thank you for your kindness. I still want to find it in Diagon Alley. He certainly wouldn't agree. This guy who looks like his own grandmother actually claims to be his sister, which is abnormal at first glance. The tall witch pursed her lips and blew a puff of smoke on his face. Hover lowered his posture and said to his boss Tom, I want to go to Diagon Alley. Can you help me open the door? Quote, open the door, this is Tom's job. His bar is here, and he can be considered half a gatekeeper. He didn't refuse and said calmly, come with me. Quote, Hover was thinking that with so many stores in Diagon Alley, there might be one that could offer him a job opportunity. Standing in front of the wall, Tom said, count up three, count in two, and finally tap three more times. Remember to use some magic when tapping, if you have a wand in the future. Quote, Hover quickly nodded and said yes, but what he was thinking was that he didn't have any money, and Ollivander probably wouldn't credit his wand. Seeing Hoffer's attitude was decent, Tom added, What's your name, kid? 
Why are you looking for a job? Huo F.A. felt that things seemed to have turned around and quickly said, My name is Huo F.A. I'm looking for a job to earn some money from buying books. In the bar lobby, one of the card-playing fairies suddenly had long ears and his eyes drifted over. Boss Tom frowned and said, If you don't have money, write a letter to Hogwarts to apply for subsidies. They don't need that much money. Also, if you want to find a job in Diagon Alley, I advise you to give up on that. They are all legitimate shops registered with the Ministry of Magic, and it's not allowed to recruit children under the age of 16. Quote, the hope that had just ignited in Hoffa's heart was suddenly shattered, like a bulging balloon piercing through the skin, deflating with a puff and puff. Write a letter to Hogwarts to reply, he also wants to write. They even said in their letter that they were looking forward to their owl's reply, but the problem is, Hover doesn't have owls. Of course, owls can be bought in Diagon Alley, but he doesn't have the money either. Not a penny. However, just as Hover was feeling a bit desperate, a card-playing fairy jumped off the stool and squeezed over the waist of several chat wizards. The fairy waved and said, Wait a moment, little wizard, what's your name? Quote, Huo F.A. turned his head curiously and saw a fairy wearing one-sided glasses, leather jacket, leather shoes, and a suit on his arm walking over. He is only half the height of a normal person, which means he is about the same height as himself. He had a fashionable blonde hair on his forehead and two earrings hanging from his ears. Compared to the other big-bellied old fairies, he looked quite pleasing to the eye. My name is Hover. What's wrong? The fairy nodded and pushed her unilateral glasses. My surname is Bark, isn't it? Quote. Yes. Hover was very surprised. Why did you come? I've been waiting for you for three days, the fairy complained. My name is Induo. Please take good care of me. Quote. He skillfully extended his hand, as if it were a salesman. Huo F.A. held the other party's hand and looked up and down at the fairy dressed up by the staff member, thinking to himself, what did he do to make a fairy wait for three days? You should know that these creatures are extremely stingy. Did you owe him money? But Induo quickly said, a few days ago, a wizard asked me to do something and asked me to wait here for a child named Hover. Speaking, Induo coughed and flipped through the pockets of his trousers. He took out a crumpled letter from a pile of blue copper coins and handed it to Hover. This is the letter that the wizard asked me to send to you. Quote, Huo F.A. quickly picked it up and saw that the letter had no signature, only some English words circled around it. Last time I did an T prepare two subsidies. I LL have Indoor take you to the Gringotts to pick it up. He is a good fairy. Get along well. See you at school. Very concise language. But Hover knew at a glance who wrote the letter. It was Dumbledore, and it turned out he hadn't forgotten himself. Hoffer couldn't help but feel a slight warmth in his heart, and he breathed a sigh of relief. At least there is still someone in this world who cares about themselves, so I don't have to work anymore. After reading the letter, Huo F.A. became more and more pleased with the fairy in front of him. Wait. Why is this guy suddenly rubbing his hands and laughing so vulgar? Huo Fahu hesitated and said, What are you laughing at? The fairy pushed her glasses and smiled, The situation is like this, but something unexpected happened. What accident? Huo F.A. felt a hint of unease in his heart. The unexpected thing is that this guy has been playing cards in my store for three days and has already lost for three days. Tom answered Hover, and the bar owner sneered with his arm in his arms before turning around and leaving. No longer pay attention to Hover. 
looking at the ashamed fairies in front of me, then at Tom's back, and finally at the several fairies on the card table collecting money. Hugh O.F.A. felt several Dementors kissing him, and strands of soul slowly floated out of his seven orifices. What do you mean? My admission subsidy. Induo said. That's right. I have already lost. Quote. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Exploration of Secret Realms. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4. Exploration of Secret Realms. Are you still human? Quote. Hugh O.F.A. grabbed Indoor's collar in a fit of anger and roared. Why do you want to bet on my allowance? Yinduo was startled and quickly patted Hugh O'Far's hand, which was full of veins. He said, I'm not actually investing in disguise, right? That little money is not a problem. Oh, why are we fairies short of money? Look at how anxious you are. Quote, Hugh O.F.A. gasped for breath and let go of his hand. He was almost suffocated by this fairy. Are you serious? Believe me. Indoor pounded his chest. I promise to get you the books and wand before sunset, as long as you follow my instructions. Hugh O.F.A. gave the fairy a cold glance. How could he not please him? Fortunately, Dumbledore would find such a person to handle things, and even said he was a good fairy. What should I do? Hover asked. Firstly, we need to go to Diagon Alley. Quote. Yinduo smiled and said, extending his slender fingers, he tapped three times on the wall in front of him. The wall immediately shook like a living creature, quickly separating into a wide arch amidst the rustling dust, leading to a winding and endless cobblestone road. And at this moment, an inexplicable sound suddenly rang out in Hoffa's mind. Ding. Discovered the wizard's secret realm. The system has been activated. This system is a compulsory education system. The existence of this system has only two purposes. One ideographic comma the host must complete a seven-year Hogwarts magic education. If unable to complete, mandatory measures will be taken if necessary. Two ideographic comma help the host better explore and record this world. And the system will reward them every time they complete a secret realm exploration. Open black lens bracket current wizarding realm, London wizarding market close black lens bracket. Complete 50% exploration of the secret realm, you will receive, one, third of the spell fragments. One. Third of the spell fragments contain unique energy, which can upgrade one of your spell abilities after obtaining three pieces. Complete 100% exploration of the secret realm. You will gain the knowledge of the great god. The knowledge of a great deity is mysterious and unpredictable. Before possessing it, you had no idea of its possible power. Hush. Hover stood still for a moment. Fortunately his heart had become much stronger under a series of changes. He carefully browsed through the information in his brain several times. It's not surprising that I have a system on me. The function of the system is to be average, complete tasks, and then receive rewards. Just the name of this system seems a bit strange. The compulsory education system must complete a seven-year magic education program. Hover always feels strange. Would anyone refuse to study at Hogwarts for seven years? Mighty as Voldemort, he stayed at school for seven years before leaving, which shows the charm of this school. But this system also says that if it cannot complete it on its own, it will take compulsory measures if necessary. Funny. I never missed class in my past life. Okay. He tried to ask the system, but the system did not answer. The only change was that after obtaining the system, an empty green trough appeared in Hoffa's sea of consciousness. It shows that, current secret realm exploration 0%. Looking at the empty slot, 
Huo Fa understood clearly that he could only obtain rewards by constantly exploring. There are two types of rewards, open black lens bracket spell fragments close black lens bracket and open black lens bracket great god's knowledge close black lens bracket. I just don't know the purpose of these two things for now. After confirming that he was not mistaken, Hover withdrew from Shihai. Yinduo saw Huo Fa standing there foolishly for a while, thinking it was his first time coming to Diagon Alley, and was startled. After waiting for a while, he pushed Huo Fa and said, Don't look, let's go quickly. We still have a lot of things to do. Hover finished studying the system and nodded to Indoor. The two of them walked into Diagon Alley. Compared to the decadence and tension of the Muggle world outside, the Wizarding world appears particularly leisurely and colorful. Each shop window is adorned with various materials, baskets of red feathers, blue bat eyes, and peculiar silver instruments. Various auspicious wind chimes hanging at the door. Those wind chimes all have small mouths, and whenever someone passes by, they sing together in a jingle. The lyrics he sang were not about soliciting business, but rather some beautiful old sayings that Hover couldn't understand. Some storefronts are very hidden, and only after he has to enter, will the system's exploration of green slots increase. For example, in a corner shop, there is only a small wooden cabinet with a broom at the entrance. If not carefully examined, Hover almost thought this was a warehouse for storing miscellaneous items. Upon entering, he realized that it was actually a wizard's restaurant, beautifully decorated, and filled with domestic elves shuttling back and forth. Of course, what left the deepest impression on Hoffer was a shop called, Polsius Weather Blanket, with a row of small characters under the large gilded lettering on the sign. Are you still worried about not adapting to the local conditions? Are you still struggling with day and night reversal? As long as it's 50 gallons, you can choose your favorite weather. It's fun to stay at home, portable for travel, and only requires 50 gallons. What are you waiting for? Come and buy it now. Weather blanket. Hover had never seen such a shop before and it was not in the original work, so he naturally walked in. After entering, he was stunned. This shop really sells weather. On the blanket on the left side of the shop, it was a thunderstorm with lightning and thunder, and a dark cloud was raining in the sky, making a sound. On the blanket on the right is a dry desert area, with several mini camels walking back and forth in the desert. In front of the desert lies a rainforest climate, with lush forests everywhere. Parrots in the forest are jumping around, and as soon as they approach, their faces are covered in moisture. Hover also saw a wizard wearing sunglasses lying on a lounge chair next to the rainforest, sunbathing. A shop owner next to him is recommending his products with a smile on his face. How about it? Is it realistic enough? I guarantee you won't experience the feeling of tropical rainforests sunbathing in other parts of the UK. Quote, the wizard who was sunbathing got up from the lounge chair. That's right, it's similar to what I expected, but I think we should increase the humidity a bit more. Make the parrots in the middle of the forest a little more. Okay. The shop owner waved his wand and immediately, amidst the singing of parrots, the entire rainforest rolled up into a blanket. Stacked neatly. After the wizard paid, he left contentedly with the blanket. Hover was surprised and walked all the way to see. There are all kinds of weather in the store, endless grasslands, glaciers covered in ice and snow, beautiful small islands and even volcanoes that are about to erupt. The shop owner walked over and asked, Hello, are you planning to purchase a weather item or customize a weather item you like? Huo Fahao ran. I'll just take a quick look. 
Yinduo was holding his head and shaking his head on the side. Ten minutes later, Hover and Indor walked out of the Perseus weather shop. The wizard's ability made him increasingly feel magical. Of course, as he walked, the green trough in the sea of consciousness slowly increased. 13% exploration. 22%. 29%. 37%. Due to his dissatisfaction with Huo Fa's slow and wandering posture, he kept reminding him that time is money. Finally, an hour later, when Hoffa stopped in front of a fabric store, the green slot rose to 40%. Mojin Robe Shop. Hover looked up at the sign, which he was quite familiar with. Because one day, many years later, the enemies of Malfoy and Harry Potter met for the first time in this store. As for now, it is estimated that there are still more than 10 years until the birth of Malfoy's father Lucius. With a deep sigh, Hover was forcefully pushed through the door by Indoor. There was a hunchbacked eagle-nosed man in the shop, dressed in a sophisticated purple robe. His eyes scanned the door with a gloomy expression, and his squinting eyes lingered on Hoffa's tattered shoes and socks for a long time. As Duo didn't care, he jumped towards the counter with a big grin. Then he took out a gold watch from his pocket and threw it to the hunchbacked man. As usual, Mojin, rent a set of clothes. Quote, Mojin took the gold watch, his eyes firmly fixed on Hover. Your guest this time doesn't seem to have much potential. Indoor said. You can't control this, Morkan. According to the rules, if you can't come back within an hour, I'll leave my grandfather's watch for you. HMPH. Mojin pushed the gold watch under the counter and pulled his head, shouting loudly. Polina, come out and work. Quote. Hover didn't know what they were talking about, but it seemed that this shop was actually a family-owned one, and the hunchbacked owner didn't know what his relationship was with the future Mrs. Morkan. However, the next second he knew the answer. With Lao Mojin's shout, a pink little lowly pushed open the counter and jumped out. Here you go. Dad, don't shout so loudly. Quote, she is half a head shorter than Hover and looks only eight or nine years old. Although she was small, her movements were very agile. As soon as she saw Hover, she immediately pushed him onto the wooden bench. Keep your hands straight. Quote. Hover obediently straightened his hand and thought to himself, Is this little girl named Polina the future Mrs. Morkan? I was born with the material to do this job. I just haven't changed my husband's surname, and I don't know if he has ever been married. Huofa thought with great interest. Polina didn't know what the boy was thinking. She measured Hoffa's body size up and down and asked, Are you a freshman here to customize the school robe? Quote, Before Hover could speak, Indoor quickly shouted, Hey, little girl, we're not here to buy school robes. You need to dress up my client as handsome, like the ancient Persian prince. Quote, Lao Mojin snorted disdainfully. Polina extended her tongue and made a face at Indoor, then turned her head to Hoffa and whispered, Why did you mix him up? Fairies don't have any good things. Quote. Huo F.A. sighed and said, It's hard to say in one word. Although Lao Mojin looked very snobbish, the tailor's strength was still there. Ten minutes later, Huo F.A. was completely refreshed. He was wearing a luxurious red robe with dark golden stripes, knee-high calf leather boots on his feet, and his black hair was neatly combed. In duo even snatched old Mojin's ring and put it on Hoffa's hand. He now appears to be a descendant of a pure-blooded family. Hoffa stood in front of the mirror, looking at himself, suddenly thinking in his mind how handsome Voldemort would be if he wore this outfit.
Induo rubbed his pointed chin with his long fingers and suddenly turned his head to ask Polina. Do you like him now? Quote. The future Madame Morkan blushed and kicked indoor hard, covering her face and running away. It seems like the effect is almost there. Indoor snapped his fingers. Let's go. Your Highness the Prince. We are very busy today. Quote. After admiring himself in the mirror, Hugh O.F.A. suddenly hugged his arm and looked at Indoor with a smile, saying, Do you want to wrap me up and drag me to Gringotts for a loan? Quote. Yinduo was so scared that he took two steps back and almost fell to the ground. The old Mo Jin next to him was taken aback and suddenly burst into laughter. Fairy, fairy, you also have today. Why? How does it feel to be seen through by a furry kid for a ghost trick? Quote. Hugh O.F.A. sneered and said, If you want me to tell you, you lost my scholarship, but your gold watch is also worth some money. How about giving me that watch as compensation? Quote. Yinduo jumped high in one go, like a spring under his feet. Absolutely not. There are many ways to get money. But my watch only has one yuan, absolutely not, absolutely not. Really? Then tell me, what is the interest rate for Gringotts? Are you dressing me up like this to take me on a loan? And how much money do I have to repay now? Quote, Huofa stood calmly in front of the fairy, looking down at him from a high position. I believed you only for Dumbledore's sake but your actions have made it difficult for me to continue trusting you. Old Mojin murmured softly, Merlin's beard is on. Quote, the cold sweat on his forehead came down, and he looked at Hover in front of him and murmured, Running Gore, are you really only 11 years old? Hover untied the tight neckline and sat on the stool. You only have two options. One is to compensate me with the gold watch and the other is to explain your plan clearly to me. Yinduo gave a bitter smile and rubbed his hair. Ten minutes later, Hover and Indoor, dressed in splendid attire, walked out of Madame Morkan's shop and were on their way to Gringotts to borrow money. No matter how hard Hover tried to speak, Indoor did not agree to compensate him with the gold watch. But he told Hoffer his plan in detail. The current situation in Europe is tense, and Gringotts is taking the opportunity to expand to other countries in Europe, requiring a lot of foreign partners. Hoffa's mixed race face can bring him a lot of convenience. If operated properly, he can package Hoffa as a foreign aristocrat and then extract a venture capital fund from Gringotts. Indeed, for Hoffa, who had experienced the era of information explosion in his past life, these tricks of Induo were not much. But it has to be said that this guy is indeed a bit clever and dares to exploit loopholes in such big banks. And it seems that this is not the first time he has done it. It was precisely because Duo patted his chest to ensure that he had succeeded many times and that any risks would belong to him that Hover agreed to take a risk with him. I do need the funds to study at Hogwarts. End of this chapter. Chapter 5. The Scammer Indoor. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5. The Scammer Indoor. The Gulling Pavilion is located in the center of a row of commercial streets and is a very tall white building that stands out in comparison to the surrounding buildings. In any world, banks are very imposing. In front of the shiny bronze gate stood two solemn-looking fairies, dressed in crimson and gilded uniforms. After seeing Hugh O.F.A. approaching, the two fairies bent slightly at the same time. There is a legend that this shop was the first one in the entire Diagon Alley. One person and one demon walked into the Gulling Pavilion, and upon arriving here, Induo was wearing a suit, holding his head and chest high, completely devoid of his previous vulgar and lewd demeanor. Passing through the second silver gate, there were warning signs written on it. 
Please come in, stranger, but be careful. What will happen to insatiable greed? Just take, get for nothing. We'll surely receive the harshest punishment. So if you want to take it from our underground vault, a wealth that never belonged to you, thief, you have been warned, be careful not to attract treasure, but to seek retribution. These slogans are all in Old English and have a strong sense of time. After seeing this row of slogans, Hugh O.F.A., who was originally calm, couldn't help but feel his heart beating up and down like a bucket. He came to Gulling Pavilion to cheat money for his first stop of rebirth and went to study. He was really crazy. Judging from Induo's confident appearance, Hugh O.F.A. could only calm his heart. At this point, complaining is useless. Only by playing your role well can you gain more trust. In banks, trust is money. Indoor said, your current name is Sylvie Spencer. He is a descendant of a French nobleman, understand. Hugh O.F.A. sneered, you're really well prepared. Passing by a group of fairies constantly weighing gems, Hover and Indoor arrived at the counter. Yin Duo's lips wriggled and he whispered softly. Silby doesn't speak English. From now on, let me handle everything. Okay. Hover nodded silently. Yin Duo looked up at a bald old fairy wearing glasses in front of the counter. This time the guest came from France and represented the family to discuss investment matters with us. This is proof of the Spencer family's overseas industry. As he spoke, Induo somehow conjured up a piece of paper and handed it to him. The old fairy had a solemn expression. He crossed his fingers and first glanced up and down at Hugh O.F.A., nodding slightly to him. Hover nodded to him with a reserved gesture. Then the old fairy took out a magnifying glass and carefully studied the paper from indoor. Hoffer's teeth itch with hatred when he sees that piece of paper. Yinduo was obviously well prepared. Perhaps he had made up his mind from the beginning and colluded with him to cheat money, which was why he intentionally lost his tuition fees. After studying the paper, the old fairy waved and a fairy secretary walked over behind him. The old fairy said, take them to room 103. The fairy secretary immediately nodded in agreement. He took Hover to the elevator at Gringotts, pressed it a few times, and the old-fashioned sliding door elevator automatically floated up and walked upwards. Hoffer thought that Harry Potter and Hagrid were walking underground when they first came to Gringotts, but he was walking up with Indoor. This unknown feeling made him uneasy. At the tenth floor, the elevator opened. Yinduo immediately leaned over at the door, appearing as a waiter and letting Huofa pass first. To highlight the nobility of his identity, Huofa sneered inwardly, as he was indeed a professional fraudster, and he always acted in full. He didn't refuse either, learning from the aristocrats he had seen in movies in his past life, and walked on with dignity. The hallway on the floor exudes a luxurious rose fragrance, with a red carpet on the ground and gilded magical lighting on both sides of the walls, which is very luxurious. The fairy secretary sent Indoor and Hover into room 103 and then left. It was broad daylight outside, but the fireplace in the room was burning with flames, and the walls were filled with silverware and oil paintings, dim yet luxurious. Mr. Laffer, let's see who I brought this time. Yinduo cleared his throat with joy and spoke loudly. In front of the fireplace, a wheelchair turned around. On the wheelchair, there is a fairy, an old fairy, and a dying old fairy. He was draped in a red blanket, his head trembling slightly, and his nose was as long as Hoffa's forearms. Hover swore that he had never seen such an old and paralyzed fairy before, he was simply Stephen Hawking among the fairies. 
Induo walked over and gave a loud kiss on the forehead of the old fairy, which had only a few hairs left. Trojan horse. Huo F.A. felt a chill as he watched. The old fairy cracked her mouth and pointed to the red sofa beside her. Hover sat down quietly. Yinduo walked into a nearby cabinet and skillfully took out a glass of red wine. Pour the wine while speaking. Ralph, the wizarding world in France is now facing problems, and Germany's ambition is unstoppable. This Mr. Spencer is willing to mortgage some of their family's properties in France in exchange for the protection of the British Ministry of Magic. Quote, Ralph muttered, scary words and sensationalism, indoor, you always do this. The voice was hoarse like a broken gong. Yinduo handed over the parchment and said, believe it or not, this is the land deed. Take a look. Laffer took a look and then muttered, Delphine Spencer is really a land without a master. The old fairy glanced at Hoffer and said, I don't know about this person's relationship with Miss Delphine. Quote, Induo patted his chest and promised, brother, blood brother, the only heir of the Spencer family. Don't worry, there's absolutely no problem. The old fairy nodded. Just this price. Quote, Induo raised a finger. 10,000 gold coins plus a security agreement. This is the price. And if feasible, you can obtain a large amount of land including the port of Bordeaux, which will be delivered within two years. Quote, the old fairy's murky eyes lit up as she looked at Hugh O.F.A. without speaking. Induo said, don't worry, he doesn't speak English. The old fairy immediately began to bargain with Indoor, watching two people arguing with each other in front of each other. Hugh O.F.A. smiled on his face, and his mother bought a batch in his heart. In duo, this fairy, is simply a lying and unblinking beast. How did this kind of thing get a good evaluation in Dumbledore's eyes? Dumbledore is one of the few wise men in the world of Harry Potter. Is this fairy so thick-skinned that even Dumbledore can be deceived? Or is it that Dumbledore is not old enough to suffer a great loss from Indoor, which is why he became so wise? Finally, the argument has come to an end. The old fairy looked at Hover eagerly. Yinduo, with a gloomy face, approached Huofa and whispered in his ear, isn't this old man's nose very funny? Nod yes. Shake your head no. Huofa silently looked at the old fairy's huge rosacea for a while, and finally, he nodded solemnly in the anticipation of the old fairy's eyes. The old fairy showed a satisfied smile. Yinduo stood up and cursed. Damn it, five thousand is five thousand. You old man, Grande is not as ruthless as you. Ding. With a crisp sound. Ten minutes later, Hover and Indoor stood at the exit of Gringotts. A thick gold coin bounced between Indoor's slender fingers. He looked at Hover with a small leather bag and smiled. Why, I'm right, right. Fairies never lack money. Quote. Hover looked at his small leather bag, which didn't look big, but it had a traceless stretching spell inside containing at least 5,000 gold gerunds. 5,000 gold coins. I'm afraid Harry Potter doesn't even have that much money in his little vault. Hugh O.F.A. asked, So were all those industrial land deeds forged by you? Quote. Indoor shrugged and said, Otherwise, do you really think you're a French nobleman? Hover sighed and said, Are you not afraid of being brought up by these people? This is a blatant scam. Quote. Kid. If your vision is long term enough, you will never worry about coins. Yinduo chuckled and strode ahead. Times are about to change. Before these greedy guys can hand over their business, those lands will turn into scorched earth. All the prosperity will disappear. At that time, 
Whether the land deeds are true or false will be meaningless. Hover looked at indoors back in shock. If it were an ordinary 11-year-old child, I wouldn't even know what he's talking about. But Hoffer knew that World War II was imminent, and France would be the first to fall and turn it into a war zone. Not to mention that Indor sold fake land deeds to fairies. Even if he really brought the land deeds from the Palace of Versailles, those fairies would not receive them. This guy is purely making war money by playing time difference. Hugh O.F.A., who was puzzled, chased after him. Hey, how did you know? How could you dare to predict that there will be war in the future? Or what if these guys discovered it before the war started? Induo turned his head, and a strange gleam flashed on his face. Of course I know, I am a fairy from the German island of Heigoland. As for being discovered, rest assured that no one dares to go to Hogwarts to trouble a freshman. Quote, speaking, Indoor threw a small cowhide bag directly to Hover. Hover grabbed the cowhide bag and his hand sank downwards. Upon opening it, it was filled with sparkling gold gerunds. Indoor said, one gallon for 17 silver coins, one silver coin for 29 gnats. I gave you 100 gallons, which is much more generous than Hogwarts scholarship. It's enough for you to buy some books and wands, and it's not second-hand yet. After playing with the wizard's coins for a while, Hover looked up slightly annoyed. We work together, why did you get 5,000 Canadian dollars while I only have 100 Canadian dollars? Induo blinked and said, you didn't do anything. Quote, Hover pursed his lips and didn't speak, putting the small leather bag close to his body. One gallon can be exchanged for five pounds, and if converted into later Chinese yuan, it is worth 45 yuan. 100 kalon, 4,500 RMB. For myself now, it is already a huge sum of money. Although Huo Fe likes money, he also knows that it is better to take less of unjust gains. This time he had no choice but to take this strange risk, and he wouldn't do it the next time he was killed. He doesn't want to test the power of the Gulling Pavilion. Returning to the Mojin clothing store, in the unwilling gaze of old Mojin, Induo retrieved his gold watch. And Huo Rulu took off his fancy clothes and changed into his dirty clothes just like Cinderella who was beaten back to her original shape after midnight. Fortunately, he bought the school robe, which is not second-hand yet. After buying the school robe, accompanied by Indoor, Hover went to Lycan Bookstore to buy his Hogwarts textbook. Although he wished he could open it and read it now, he knew it wasn't the time yet. By the time he finished strolling through half of Diagon Alley, Huo Far's level of exploration of his secret realm had reached 45% in his sea of knowledge. As long as he increases by another 5%, he can receive the first reward in the system, one third of the spell fragments. However, compared to spell fragments, there is now something that excites and anticipates him even more. Wand. What he has been dreaming of. Under the leadership of Indoor, Hover arrived at the wand shop of Ollivander, which is a popular shop among fans all over the world. As described in the book, as the most mysterious shop in the world, this place appears quite inconspicuous. A small storefront, peeling golden signs, and dusty display windows. He had just walked to the door when suddenly, Indoor beside him reached out his hand and stopped Huo F.A who was in high spirits. As for the reason, Hover immediately knew. A huge magical wave suddenly came from the store, accompanied by crazy and extremely excited laughter. That's right. That's it. That's it. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Semi-finished products. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6. Semi-finished products.
The voice was very familiar, and the wild laughter had just ended. A tall and thin body bumped open the door of Ollivander's shop, and the handsome boy walked out. His eyes were red, his body trembled slightly, and he looked extremely excited as he admired a purple wooden wand in his hand, completely ignoring Hover and Indoor standing at the door. The air was filled with raging magical energy, and Hoffa's hair was blown up. With lingering fear in his heart, he looked at the boy's departing figure and asked in a low voice, Who is that? How could there be such powerful magical power at this age? Of course Hover knows who that is. Tom Mavoro Riddle. The future demon Voldemort has obtained his first assistant in life, a powerful purple wooden wand. No wonder he was so excited, but unfortunately, the wand, which had accompanied him for over 50 years, was still mercilessly abandoned by him. Shaking his head, Hover said to Indor, shall we go in together? Yinduo shook his head and said, go in yourself. Fairies don't need wands, nor do they enter such shops. This old guy's wand-making materials also include fairy bones. I'm afraid I'll kill him if I see him. Hover remained silent and had to push open Ollivander's shop alone. At the moment of entering. Ding. System. Current secret realm. London wizardry market. Exploration degree reaches 50%. Obtain spell fragments. One third. In the sea of consciousness there is an additional hazy fragment. Hover wanted to explore the fragment, but it was completely unavailable. He had to give up this idea and instead deal with the current situation. In front of him, thousands of boxes were densely packed from the ground to the ceiling, and the air was filled with the smell of silence and solemnity. Ollivander One Store is a family-owned store. The history of this family manufacturing wands can be traced back to 382 BC, and the original meaning of the surname Ollivander is, the person who owns an olive wood wand. Therefore, some people, including this generation of Ollivander himself, believe that their ancestors followed the Romans to England. The owner of this generation of Ollivander stores is Garrick Ollivander. He doesn't look as old as described in the book 50 years later, but rather a spirited middle-aged man. Just this middle-aged man is looking a bit dull now. Ollivander did not notice Hoffa's arrival. He still stood with his mouth open in the scattered pile of wooden boxes, immersed in the shock he had just experienced. Until Hoffa reached out and shook his hand in front of him. Hey. Hello. Garrick Ollivander turned around with a sudden inspiration and quickly rubbed his face when he saw a new client. Sorry. I lost my mind. You have no idea what just happened. Hover said calmly, I know. I want to buy a wand. Ollivander muttered, of course, everyone who comes to my store comes to buy a wand. Is it left or right? Right hand. Lift your arms up. He measured Hoffa's measurements, starting from the shoulders to fingertips, then from the wrists to the elbows, from the shoulders to the floor, from the knees to the armpits, and finally measuring the head circumference. He measured and said, every Ollivander wand has a powerful magical substance, which is its essence. We use unicorn fur, phoenix tail feathers, and the heart nerves of the dragon. Huo F.A. chuckled lightly and said, Do you have to say the same thing to everyone once? Quote, Ollivander, who was interrupted, was slightly annoyed. Rude child, I am a businessman, do you understand? A businessman. Quote, as he spoke, he quickly picked up the boxes on the ground and stuffed each wand into Hoffa's hand. Winter green wood, phoenix feathers, 11 inches. No. No. Quote. Unicorn fur. Rosewood. 13 inches. No. No. The tendons of the dragon. Walnut wood. 9 inches. No. Still no. B. 
Beach. May was hair, 10 inches. No. Of course not. What do I think? Quote. Ollivander quickly moved the box while breaking his mouth. Wands rolled around in Hoffa's hand like lanterns, but he felt like holding them was like holding a regular wooden stick, and nothing happened. Applewood, 17 inches, no way. Quote, Acacia wood, 14 inches, no way. Cypress wood, 9 inches, no way. White wax wood, no way. Yamanashi wood, no way. Cold cedar, can't do it. Cedar wood, can't do it. Quote, cherry wood, can't do it. Black prickly pear wood, oh, it still doesn't work. As time passed by, the empty boxes under his body piled higher and higher, and Hover couldn't help but yawn. If it weren't for receiving Hogwarts notification, Hoffer would almost doubt whether he really had magical talent. He glanced outside the shop and looked around impatiently. Finally, when both Ollivander and Hover stood in the waist-deep pile of boxes, Ollivander couldn't run anymore. He gasped and asked, Are you really a wizard? Or are you actually a mute cannon? Quote, Hover, who was overwhelmed by the pile of boxes, said helplessly, do you want to see my Hogwarts notice? Ah! Ollivander let out a soft shout in anger. How could such a thing happen? It shouldn't have happened. This incident also exceeded Hoffa's expectations. He didn't expect himself to be incompatible with so many wands. To go to school, one must have a wand. Hugh O.F.A. scratched his head and asked hesitantly, are there any other staff makers in Diagon Alley? This sentence pierced Ollivander's nerves, and his pale grey eyes widened. What? You have doubts about my skills? I tell you, from 100 BC until now, there has never been a wizard's wand that Ollivander cannot make. Even Merlin has used our family's wand. Quote. Hover remained silent and the two of them stared at each other in the pile of boxes. The air fell into an extremely awkward silence. After looking at each other for a while, suddenly Ollivander asked softly, It seems like you're not British. Half and a half, I'm not quite sure. But my father is from China, Hover said. Is it the East? Ollivander smashed his mouth. I see. Their habits there are indeed different from ours. Quote. After speaking, he waved his wand and all the boxes were put away, returning to their original position. Follow me. Hover followed Ollivander to the back hall of the shop. Here, there are piles of various materials, feathers, hair, nerves, hearts, spider legs, wood from various trees, and even a skeleton of a fairy. Hugh O.F.A. thought to himself that no wonder Yinduo didn't want to come in. Speaking of making a staff, it was quite cruel. Under the pile of materials, Ollivander bent down and dug for half a day before finally pulling out a crumpled grey box. He blew and a huge amount of dust rose up. The grey box has turned into a black box. Ollivander stood in front of Hoffa with a solemn expression and opened the box. In the box, there is a magic wand lying quietly. It's not right to say it's a wand, because there are some knots on its body that look rough and not as delicate as those wands outside. It's like a branch cut directly from a tree. A magical feeling appeared in Hoffa's heart. It's looking at me. Hoffa realized this. It's a bit excited. Without hesitation, Hover reached out his hand and grabbed the quaint branch. At this moment, a touch of bloodline connection appeared, and a sense of vicissitudes and gentle warmth flowed throughout his body. The thousand-year-long lonely wait almost made him want to cry. Nothing happened, but Hover knew that this was his destined companion. He let go of his hand and something strange happened. The wand did not fall. It floated above Hoffa's palm. Floating, he
he saw the only artificial mark on the wand. At its tail, there is a deep scratch. It is coated with slightly faded red paint. That is a square font. Seal. After admiring the full picture of this wand, it fell back into Hoffa's palm. Hoffa's face showed a slight smile, and he looked at Ollivander with joy, hoping he could explain it to himself. But Aeolian Fande's eyes were full of suspicion. He turned around with his hands behind his back. How could this be? How could this be? What's going on? Hover asked. How much does this wand cost? I'll take it. Money. Ollivander coughed and said, forget it. The wand chooses its master. That's it. But I have to remind you that this wand is an unfinished product. If anything happens, I'm not responsible. What? Hugh O.F.A. exclaimed in surprise, unfinished product, what does it mean? Ollivander recounted, more than 100 years ago, my grandfather Gabriel Ollivander once traveled to India with the Queen's ship. There was a very high snow mountain at the border between the Qing dynasty and India. There was a tree at the foot of the mountain, which the locals called the body tree. My grandfather stayed there for a while, and when he left, an old monk gave him this branch as a gift, saying that it contained magical power. My grandfather didn't feel any power, he just brought it back as a souvenir. My father also didn't notice its uniqueness, so did I. A few years ago, I wanted to make it into a wand, but found that it couldn't t-match any wand core, such as dragon heart, phoenix feathers, or unicorn fur, so I kept it here. As he spoke, Ollivander sighed and said, I always thought that what my grandfather brought back was just a piece of wood without magic. Now it seems really strange that there is wood that can cast spells without relying on magical substances. Hugh O.F.A. was surprised and said, so this thing is just a branch. That's right. Ollivander shrugged, but it's my precious souvenir. If you want to buy it, you'll have to pay me double the price. Hover. By the time I walked out of Ollivander's store, it was almost dark. In the distance, there are bright red burning clouds, and on the road are some wizards walking hurriedly. Judging from their attire, many of them were purchased from Diagon Alley after finishing work at the Ministry of Magic. Hover stood outside Ollivander's shop, looking happily at the body branch with the word, seal, engraved on it. I thought to myself that I finally have my own wand. After spending 20 gold crowns, Hover obtained his wand. And Ollivander generously gave Hover a calf leather holster that could be tied to his arm. Used for daily wand wearing and maintenance. Yinduo was waiting outside almost falling asleep. When Hugh O.F.A. came out, he couldn't help but curse loudly, did you fall in love with that old man? Have you been in there for so long? Quote, Hover is in a good mood and doesn't want to argue with him. He put away his wand and patted the fairy's shoulder. All right, young demon, don't be so impatient. Do you want to go and have a drink together? Drink a fart. Indor said angrily, I'm waiting for you to come out, just to tell you. I promised you to get the book and wand before dark, and now I've done it, so our contractual relationship has come to an end. Hey, Hugh O.F.A. paused for a moment, where are you going? Quote, where am I going? I told you I'm a fairy from the German island of Heigoland, and now I'm going home, said Indor. Germany. Hoffer was in a good mood and couldn't help but say a little extra, then don't get into war. Why, do you also think there will be a war? Induaduo glanced at Hoffer, these British guys don't think so. There's a word in Muggle that goes, sui, and, what? Single quote quote. Induo tilted his head and pondered. Pacification, Hugh O.F.A. sighed. There's no other way. Everyone hopes for peace, 
even if it's a fantasy piece. That's right. It's appeasement. You know a lot about it, murmured in duo. Don't worry, I don't like war either. Quote. After speaking, he raised his finger. Hover takes a step back. Is this the action of preparing to cast a spell and leave? However, there was no response, and Induo looked at Hover with a hesitant expression. Hello, can you go to King's Cross Station? Hover nodded and said, I can. Quote, the platform is between 92 platforms, you have to keep running to get through. Quote, Huofa smiled. Of course he knew all these things. But when this fairy spoke it out, he always felt something strange. Maybe this guy isn't as damn as he looks. I see. Thank you very much for telling me. It's really a big help. HMPH. Yinduo said proudly, you may be a bit clever, but after all, you are only 11 years old. Quote. All right. All right. Go back to your Black Goran Island. Hover said helplessly. Induo raised his finger, but in the end he put it down again. Huo F.A. was speechless. What are you doing again? Quote. The fairy did an incredible thing. He took off one of his silver earrings and with a click, he inserted them into Hoffa's ear. The pain almost made him cry. Hover glared angrily at Indor. What are you doing? Yinduo laughed heartily and said, I really appreciate a man who dares to come out and find a job at such a young age. If you want to find a job in the future, you can come to me. Don't look for me in Diagon Alley, there's no oil in this job. After speaking, he raised his hand and snapped his finger. The figure of the fairy instantly disappeared into the air. Only Hover rubbed his bleeding ears and angrily cursed in place, bastard. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. The Learning of the Great God. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7. The Learning of the Great God. At night, after Indoor left, Hover did not return to the orphanage. Instead, I rented a small bedroom at the Broken Cauldron Bar and had some wizard grilled meat and fresh fruits for dinner. He has 100 crowns, and after digging to buy wands and book flowers, he still has over 70 crowns. For an 11-year-old child, he is already wealthy enough. Of course, it is only temporary. He will stay at Hogwarts for seven years, and this little money alone is not enough. However, in the future, finding ways to live a good life in front of us is Hoffa's creed. When he was busy during the day, he didn't feel much. After the night calmed down, the excitement in his heart was always uncontrollable. He kept taking out the newly purchased wand and flipping it back and forth. Carefully experience the feeling of magic flowing within the body. In the latter half of the night, he couldn't hold back and flipped through the book of the curse lesson. I tried a few simple spells and this magical wand didn't disappoint him. The semi-finished wand mentioned by Ollivander should not work too well. The floating spell that had been bothering Ron Harry for a while was almost studied by Hoffer in the blink of an eye. He sat on the bed, pointed his wand at the pillow, and recited a spell. Yugadim Leviosa. The pillow whizzed back and forth on the bed. After playing for a while, Hover was worried that the people from the Ministry of Magic would come and cause trouble for him due to casting spells outside of school. So he spent the whole night in nervousness and excitement. However, it turned out that he was overthinking and no one came to find him. A few days before the start of school, Hover exchanged a few gold coins and a little pounds, and bought himself some civilian clothes, a few jeans, and a white shirt in London. My previous clothes were a bit torn. Then, he bought some fruit and a few bottles of gin, and gave them back to Mrs. Cole as a farewell gift. Although his soul is not the same as before, 
His body has been taken care of by others for a long time. For the remaining time, he stayed in Diagon Alley, hoping to complete 100% of the exploration task of the system. Obtain the so-called knowledge of the great god. Unfortunately, due to his young age, he was unable to enter the overturned alley and there were several other dangerous dark magic shops. So his level of exploration could only remain at 60%. This made Hoffer quite regretful. He only realized the benefits of Harry Potter's invisibility cloak now. If he could become invisible, the world would be vast, and these exploration tasks were simply at his fingertips. Unfortunately, even Harry Potter's father has not been born yet. Who knows where that invisibility cloak is? Hover also wanted to try the Phantom Curse with his newly acquired wand, but that spell did not exist in the elementary spellbook at school. Hover read through all the spell books and found that most of the spells in them were life spells, and there were no more advanced spells at all. Perhaps I can find a way to learn about the Phantom Curse in the school library. Hover comforted himself like this. As for the earrings that Induo gave himself, Huo Falang studied them for several days but couldn't find their uniqueness. Moreover, What's even worse is that he can't take off this earring yet, as it looks like it's growing on his ears. Hoffer can only pray that Hogwarts is not a high school in his past life, allowing students to have a bit of their own personality. If I had worn an earring to school in my past life, I might have been kicked out by the teacher on the first day of school. Time flies in Diagon Alley, and soon it's time for school on September 1st. On this day, he woke up early, almost before dawn, afraid that he might miss the bus due to being late in an accident. Hoffer didn't have much. He didn't push any carts. He spent two pounds to buy a canvas bag and suitcase, put clothes and books in the bag, and then put a folding crucible in the suitcase. Fortunately, he got up early. It was raining heavily today, and unfortunately, Hover encountered traffic congestion during the London morning rush hour. He crossed several roads in a row and arrived at the subway station. Fortunately, London already has a subway system in this world. Although it is not as developed as later generations, it still has direct access to King's Cross Station. The London Underground in 1938 was not as prosperous, efficient, and not as fast as the later BJ Shanghai. There are also some knitted seat cushions in the subway that emit a pungent smell of cat poop. Some soldiers wearing green metal helmets and carrying rifles stood in subway carriages, swaying. They gathered together, chatting and laughing with each other, while others looked around curiously. They all look very young, probably soldiers just recruited by the British royal family, ready to report somewhere. Hover looked at these soldiers in the corner with his bag on his back, feeling a thousand emotions in his heart. By this time in a few years, I'm afraid most of the soldiers I see now will be gone. Sometimes knowing the future is not an easy task, especially in this turbulent era. King's Cross Station is located in the King's Cross area of central London, on the border of Camden and Islington, on the side of Camden. When Hover walked out of the subway station, there were already many people here. They are mostly dressed in Muggle costumes. There are also wizards who are not familiar with Muggle customs and dress up incognito. Hover saw several big men in women's clothing standing next to the station, picking their noses and chatting. Hoffer knew the method, so he naturally didn't need to ask people on the roadside like Harry Potter did. After finding the nine and ten stops, he even packed his backpack and charged straight towards the stone wall in the middle. As he rushed, he closed his eyes. The speed is getting faster and faster. Then, dong, a loud bang, hover, with his eyes closed and rushing wildly, 
collided with a soft object. Then came a chaotic ringing of tinkling bells. Huofa suddenly flipped to the ground and rolled twice in a row. Damn it! What international joke are you playing? This is Hoffa's first idea. I don't want to hit and kill you all at once. He awkwardly got up and looked up at what he had bumped into. Turns out he didn't hit the wall, but a silver-haired girl. The girl pushed the cart and suddenly stood between the walls of nine and ten stations. I almost fell head-on into her arms, scattering the luggage on her cart. Hugh O.F.A. felt like cursing his mother in his heart. This girl is so immortal, why is she lying in the middle of the road? And she's clearly not a muggle, because there was also a white owl flapping and flapping in the cage that hit the ground. Everyone else enters vertically, do you want to enter horizontally? Feeling annoyed, Hugh O.F.A. quickly stepped forward, picked up the girl, and quickly began to help her pack up her things. Sorry. Are you okay? Hugh O.F.A. asked without looking up as he tidied up. After the silver-haired girl stood up, she lifted her arms and watched Hover help her pack up. There is no intention of giving a hand. There is only silence in the air. Halfway through, Hugh O.F.A. felt something was wrong. I did bump into you but there's no need for you to remain silent. He lifted his head and looked carefully at the girl. At first glance, he was amazed. What a beautiful little girl, she has fair skin, a melon seed face, silver hair draped over her shoulders, wearing a simple white dress, and a pair of blue big eyes staring at her without blinking. Like a ghost. In less than a second, Hugh O.F.A. was enraged. The girl said, pack up, why haven't you moved? Her ghostly blue eyes were filled with pride and dissatisfaction. Huofa's face darkened. Although he had a good temper, it didn't mean he was willing to be manipulated as a domestic elf. Besides, it's clear that she hit the porcelain first. Why are you standing here horizontally? Huofa stood up and asked coldly. I'm looking for platform nine. Do you know where it is? The girl asked indifferently. Oh, it turns out to be a new student just like myself. Hugh O.F.A. looked at the other person's ignorant yet aloof expression and had the intention to play a prank on her. He pointed behind the girl and said, Look, isn't that the platform? Quote, the girl turned her head away. Huofa took advantage of this gap and without hesitation, plunged into the wall and disappeared in front of the girl. The girl turned her head and frowned, saying, where is there? No one answered. The girl quickly turned her head again. In front of me was empty, with only half of my luggage packed and an owl chirping in the cage. There was no more boy than that. The girl's face darkened. As he crawled out of the wall, Hugh O.F.A. cursed inwardly. Silly. I asked you to pretend to be forced in front of me. A small punishment was given to that arrogant girl. Hover saw an old brass metal plate embedded on a stone brick wall pillar next to the exit of the corridor. Platform 9 and 3 quarters, starting in 1849, founded by Evangeline Oppington, 15th Minister of Magic. Not much useful information. Hugh O.F.A. just glanced at the brand and walked out of the hallway. There is a sea of people in front of me. A deep red steam locomotive stopped at the crowded platform. The sign hanging on the train reads. Hogwarts Express, 11 o'clock. The thick smoke of the steam locomotive was swirling above the sparse rain, and cats of various colors were passing under people's feet. Amidst the buzzing voices of the crowd and the noise of dragging bulky luggage, owls also chirp harshly, calling out to each other. I haven't had a chance to appreciate this scene much yet. Suddenly, a soft noise came to my mind. Ding. Discovering the wizard, S. Secret Realm. Open black lens bracket current wizard, S. Secret Realm, 
Platform 9 Close Black Lens Bracket. Complete 50% exploration of the secret realm. You will receive 1. Third of the spell fragments. 1. Third of the spell fragments contain unique energy, which can upgrade one of your spell abilities after obtaining three pieces. Complete 100% exploration of the secret realm. You will gain the knowledge of the great god. The knowledge of a great deity is mysterious and unpredictable. Before possessing it, you had no idea of its possible power. Closing parenthesis. Can this also trigger exploration missions? After a moment of confusion, Hugh OFA was overjoyed. It seems that any wizard settlement can trigger exploration missions. This time, unlike the London wizardry market, there are overturned alleys and dark magic shops that I cannot go to. This is just a platform, and if I walk fast, I can quickly explore and complete it. At present, Hoffer began his exploration without hesitation. He ran from the front to the back of the car. On the way, he saw various children with pets, including frogs, owls, cats, mice, snakes, birds. He also saw handsome Tom Riddle chatting and laughing in front of several senior girls wearing green robes. But these have nothing to do with Hover. All his energy is focused on the sea of consciousness. As he ran and explored, the green trough in the sea of consciousness grew almost at a visible speed to the naked eye. 20%, 30%, 40, 5%, 50%. Ding! Obtain spell fragments, two-thirds, 60%, 70%, 90%, 100%. Ding! Obtain the knowledge of the great god. Standing at the back of the steam train, hover, s excitement and a chill rushed straight to his forehead. A large amount of unknown knowledge has gathered in the mind. In less than a few seconds, Hover trembled and a mysterious text appeared in his mind. The meditation method of Milarepa walkers. You can continuously enhance your spiritual power, strengthen your beliefs, and quickly replenish your magic through mysterious meditation. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. 8 Disgusting Girls. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 8 Disgusting Girls. Such a simple and quick reward caught Hugh O.F.A. off guard. He wished he could immediately practice according to the great god's meditation method, but it didn't work. The train honked and was about to depart. Getting into the train carriage, countless wizarding children waved goodbye to their parents at the window. Some children even shed tears, while the older wizard children kept playing and frolicking in the carriage enjoying themselves. Hover has no parents and no friends to greet him. According to the convention of other travelers, at this time Hover should go find the Iron Triangle and seize the time to hold onto the Savior's thigh. However, this era has also cut off his desire to find the Iron Triangle. To be honest, Hover doesn't care about the Iron Triangle or Harry Ron at all. He's only looking for Hermione. The heavens are pitiful. Whenever he wants to come to the world of HP, he can't see Hermione. By the time he can see Hermione, he will probably be so old that his teeth are about to drop. Hoffer wanted to lie on the tracks like a salted fish, letting Hogwarts train run over him to death. I was born to you before I was born, and you gave birth to me. I am already old, and I wish I could not be born at the same time. Every day, I am good to you. Muttering Chinese with resentment of not seeing the goddess. Hugh O.F.A., who has nothing to love, now only wants to find a place that is not disturbed by others and try his new meditation method. Although the train was large, there were also many people. Hover searched for half a day before finding an empty room near the back of the train. At this point, the train has already started. The steam engine emitted a thick smoke, honked, 
and began to move forward with a clanging sound. Putting down his luggage, Hover sat down comfortably and wiped the rain off his face. He sat cross-legged in his position, looking out the window. The train quickly left London and entered a field filled with cattle and sheep, with occasional bare grey boulders on the way. Shortly thereafter, the train entered the verdant Scottish Highlands again. The boundless highlands are not endless forests like the Nordic ones, nor are they desolate deserts, but are covered by slow undulating low green grass and moss. The low and sparse vegetation grows desolate. The exposed rocks and clear air constantly remind you that this is the plateau on the island. Miraraba's meditation method tells Hover that he should constantly feel nature, simplicity, and harmony. So he closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Start breathing slowly according to a certain route. The great God's knowledge is indeed extraordinary. At the beginning of meditation, he felt his mind clear and clear. His thinking gradually became sensitive, and many physical desires began to slowly drift away from him. However, Hoffa had just meditated for less than three cycles. Pop! The sliding door of the carriage was pushed open. Huofa, who was interrupted in meditation, opened his eyes and looked at him with some displeasure. Enemies have narrow paths. A silver-haired girl carrying a bag stood at the door, coldly looking at Hugh O.F.A. She was wearing a round top hat, with a white owl crouching on her shoulder. It was the arrogant girl who had been knocked down by him before and played with by him again. The girl had no intention of greeting Hover or talking to him at all. She sat across from Hoffer, threw her bag aside, took off her hat, and looked at him coldly with her legs crossed. The owl on her shoulder, like its owner, stared fiercely at Hoffer with big purring eyes, wishing to eat him. Hugh O.F.A. didn't expect this girl to come over and even look like he was asking for help. He really wanted to scold the other person for being crazy. But it's not possible, because humility is a traditional virtue in China when you first arrive in a new place. Hover nodded at her calmly. Hello. The girl showed a hint of sarcastic smile and said, hypocritical guy, cursing at me in his heart, but pretending to live in harmony on the surface. When did Hogwarts start ignoring the essence of students' admissions? You. Huo Fa's tone paused for a moment. He didn't expect the other party's eyes to be so sharp, let alone their sharp tongues at such a young age. He was originally planning to taunt the girl, but as he spoke, he laughed at himself for being too childish and not having any strength with a little girl. Does the mind also follow the trend of younger age when the body is young? So Hover shut up. Yes, not only did he close his mouth, but he also closed his eyes and continued to practice his meditation method as a Milarepa practitioner. The girl noticed that the other person had actually closed her eyes, ignored her, and her anger surged from her lower abdomen. She squinted her eyes and asked dangerously, What's your name? Quote, in meditation, Hugh O.F.A. snorted lightly with his nose, indicating that he didn't want to answer. The girl chuckled coldly and said, Do you think I don't know if you don't say it? Do you believe it or not? I will immediately infer your identity. Hover felt that the other party was going crazy. So he sneered, Please do as you please. Girl. Wearing the earrings of the German black Gogoland fairy, but coming to Hogwarts for school. The British Ministry of Magic does not admit students from outside the British Isles, so you must be a descendant of some immigrant family. But if we calculate by time, after 1918, the Ministry of Magic has already implemented a policy to ban immigrant wizards, so your family must have come from before 1918. One minute later. Closing parenthesis. In history, there were five pure-blooded immigrant families in the British Isles. 
Riosta, Briat, Malfoy, and Dragons, and 12 mixed-blooded immigrant families. Baird, Cooper, Byron, Davis, Ian, Goshawk. One minute later, most immigrant families have already disappeared from history, and the existing families need to be reduced to half. Depending on your age, you are either a freshman or a sophomore. However, within these still existing immigrant families, the range of 11 and 12 year old boys is expected to be reduced to one third, including Dragsas, Byron, Baird, and Goshik. Quote, but there is only one family from the Black Golan Island, the Goshik family. And the Goshik family only has one new student enrolled this year, Miller Goshik. The girl talked incessantly in her seat for three minutes before stopping. She held her arm and looked arrogantly at Hover, and the owl on her shoulder was the same. Hugh O.F.A. sighed lightly and opened his eyes with some sympathy. You know so much. Why don't you even know how to get into King's Cross Station? Quote. The girl raised her head high, so arrogant that she couldn't help but say. Because life would be too boring without challenges. After receiving the notification, I cut off any channels for obtaining information. I have to find where the station is on my own. HMPH. Even without your help, I would still have come in. Miller. Quote. Hugh O.F.A. spread out his hand and smiled slightly. Yes. Subsequently. He continued to close his eyes and rest his mind. Hover has confirmed the other person's personality. It's both arrogant and self-centered. He doesn't like such a girl. Even if the other person is beautiful, he doesn't like them. It has to be said that he even hates them a bit. After a continuous stream of pretense, the girl was not as angry as when she first came in. She asked curiously, Hey Miller, which college do you want to attend? Hover doesn't want to talk to this girl, and he's not even called any bullshit Miller. But the question she asked actually took Hover a long time to think these days, and the answer was that he himself didn't know which college he would attend. For Hover, the best outcome is to enter Gryffindor. After all, that college has a protagonist's luck, and Dumbledore is Gryffindor. But without Hermione's presence, Hover doesn't mind whether he can enter Gryffindor or not. After all, he already knew Gryffindor very well in his past life, and he is also exploring other colleges. To be honest, Hover thinks all four colleges are good, and he doesn't even mind getting into Slytherin. I heard that the public lounge is located under the Black Lake, and thinking about it gives me a sense. Out of politeness, Hoffer answered the girl calmly, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. HMPH. Quote. The girl shook her head left and right, just like hearing something funny. The owl on her shoulder also shook its head humanely with her. That group of arrogant and arrogant fools who think they are the sons of fate, but in reality, their brains are empty and they only know how to wield their wands like a wild man. I didn't expect you to like this kind of academy. It's really sad. Is it really good that Hover is completely speechless and speaks so poorly of the protagonist's academy? You can use this kind of critical tone to talk about others, or you can easily say that others are arrogant and arrogant. The girl across from me is probably a complete Slytherin. Hover. What about Slytherin? He thought the other party would probably blow on Slytherin after hitting Gryffindor. Unexpectedly, she shook her hair and sneered. Girl. Those fools who wish to have their genealogy enshrined in a shrine, ambitious but not humble, and willing to do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. Even if they succeed, they cannot escape the fate of being despised. They are truly ignorant. Hugh O.F.A. widened his eyes and said, So, what about Hufflepuff? Quote, 
The girl smiled and was just about to speak when a loud and noisy sound came from outside the door. A gentle-looking woman wearing an apron pushed open the carriage door. Hey! Do you want to buy something to eat? I have a lot of delicious food here. Huofa was startled and jumped up. Suddenly, the arrogant girl next to her was forgotten about the snacks on the train. In the world of HP, how can you avoid eating snacks on the train? On the woman's small cart, there are many delicious foods inserted at a glance. Chocolate frog, pumpkin pie, crucible-shaped cake, licorice wand. Hoffer is not short of money for the time being, so he, like Harry, bought a bit of everything without hesitation. Satisfied, he returned to his seat. The gentle flight attendant was just about to leave. The silver-haired girl suddenly stopped her. Wait a moment, are you a graduate of Heck Page? Quote. The flight attendant turned his head in surprise and smiled in surprise. Hey, how did you tell? The girl shrugged and said, it's okay. I'll just ask. You can go ahead and do whatever you need. Quote. The flight attendant smiled and said, okay, you can call me if you need it. After the female flight attendant left, Huofa also became interested. He handed the girl a chocolate frog and curiously said, how did you tell? The girl's beautiful face showed a hint of sharp sarcasm. Because only students who graduated from Heckpage would do such menial work. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Miranda. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9. Miranda. Hoffer's expression froze and his body petrified. This person is simply poisonous. He took a deep breath and silently took back the chocolate frog. The girl had stirred up his originally eager heart to eat food. In two generations, he had never seen such a arrogant guy before. He was even more arrogant than Decola Malfoy. I think you will probably be assigned to Slytherin, Hover said calmly. He said while collecting snacks in his pocket, and he no longer wanted to stay in this carriage. How could it be? The girl sneered. How could an eagle soaring high in the sky possibly be with a snake crawling underground? The owl on her shoulder let out a proud roar. Girl, I can only enter one college, which is the least populated college in Hogwarts and also the place where smart people should stay. Just be happy. Hover packed all the food into his pocket. Then he walked to the door without looking back, opened it, closed it, and walked away. Hover doesn't want to listen to her BB. He doesn't know which college he will attend, but he already knows which college he least wants to go to. He doesn't want to go to any college where this girl enters. Leaving his carriage, Hover wandered through the corridor eating snacks all the way. In the room, various children were chatting and laughing, promoting friendship between each other. When passing by a section of the Slytherin carriage, Hover saw Tom Riddle leaning back in his seat and chatting and laughing with others. Not to mention anything else, this guy's personality charm is really impressive. That old outfit couldn't conceal the leader's radiance on him at all. Hoffer had some resentment, and speaking of it, he hadn't even found a friend at Hogwarts. It's normal to assume that he was not born into the wizarding family, nor was he a famous savior like Harry, nor was he as handsome as Tom Riddle, and of course, he could only be a little transparent. After shaking for half an hour, he felt a bit embarrassed. As Hogwarts was approaching, everyone pulled up the curtains on the carriage and began to undress and change into school robes. The carriages here are mostly occupied, and Hover looked at the jeans and t-shirts on his body, thinking to himself that he couldn't take off his clothes in the hallway. As for going back to exchange, it's impossible. Hover doesn't even want to see the silver-haired girl's face. So Hover ran down the corridor, looking for an empty carriage. 
After searching for a while, he couldn't find a suitable carriage. Because it's either a girl's carriage, we need to avoid suspicion. Either it's a crowded carriage with a lot of people inside. Hover ran from the rear of the car all the way to the front. Only then did we discover the only suitable one. There was only one person inside this carriage. A girl wearing a black robe is sitting quietly in the carriage reading. Although she is also a girl, there is only one. And even with time constraints, Hover cannot be picky. Hover knocked on the glass door. The girl raised her head and calmly glanced at him. This is a girl with a very gentle appearance, wearing round glasses, fair skin, short chestnut hair, gray pupils, and a slender figure. Hover apologetically raised the school robe in his hand. The girl understood, closed the book, got up, and opened the door. Hugh O.F.A. got into the carriage and said with a smile, Sorry, the other carriages are all full. I don't have a place to change clothes. May I borrow your carriage for a while? The girl nodded and said, Change it, it's almost here. As she spoke, she helped Hover pull up the door curtain. Get up and walk out of the carriage, with your back against the car door. Hugh O.F.A. quickly changed his clothes. After finishing, he opened the door and said, All right, thank you very much. Quote, the black-haired girl nodded and sat in the carriage, continuing to read. There is no intention of saying a lot. The carriage was filled with a faint fragrance of flowers, and Hugh O.F.A. thought it might be her body odor. There was only the sound of books flipping through the pages in my ears. After a moment of silence, Huofa was a bit curious, so he asked, The other carriages are all full, but why are you sitting alone in the carriage? Girl, because I'm reading, they don't want to disturb me. Hover lowered his head and saw, War and Peace, written on the yellow cover. Huofa is quite familiar with that book. Do you also read the book, War and Peace Muggle? Hover asked. Of course, the girl looked up slightly at Hover, seemingly unwilling to take up the topic. She flipped a page and asked, Are you also a new student? Yes. Hover extended his hand and said, Hover, Hover Bark. The girl nodded and reached out her hand, Miranda Goshik. Quote, Hover feels a bit strange. Goshik. The proud silver-haired woman just said something to herself, Miller Goshik. So Hover asked, Do you have a brother named Miller? Quote. The girl looked up, pushed her glasses, and smiled gently. Sorry, I haven't heard of this person. Oh. Huofa grumbled but didn't pay attention. To be honest, he has almost forgotten about that arrogant girl. Pulling out her palm, the chestnut-haired girl took out her wand and waved it casually. The clothes that Hover took off were all neatly stacked together, like tofu chunks. After finishing, she put the book back into the box and said to Hover, You don't need to bring the things. Someone will help us get him over. Miranda had a warm and jade-like appearance from beginning to end. Not urgent or impatient let alone showing off anything. Such talents are suitable for being friends. In the last few minutes of the car, Hover and Miranda chatted casually, and the most talked about topic among the freshmen was the college. However, Miranda seems indifferent to which college she goes to. Actually, except for the location of the lounge, everything else in the college is similar, and the courses are also the same, Miranda said. Hugh O.F.A. said curiously, you seem to know Hogwarts very well. Miranda smiled and said, someone in my family works here. I came to Hogwarts when I was three years old. Quote, Hover always felt that the surname Goshik was somewhat familiar. He quickly reached into his pocket, and as expected, he saw the signature of Adebe Goshik on his new student admission notice who was the vice-principal. 
Vice Principal, Adebe Goshik. He's you. Quote. He's my grandfather, Miranda sighed. Excuse me. Can we not talk about this? Ten minutes later, the sky outside was completely dark. The train slowly stopped at a small, black platform. The small passengers were pushing and shoving, all rushing towards the car door. Hover and his newly acquainted golden thighs walked all the way off the train, and the cold at night made him shiver. Old lanterns swayed above the students' heads. He thought he would see Hagrid here, but he didn't. Here is an old one-eyed hunter riding on a horse's back. He turned his horse's head and shouted very domineeringly. First grade freshman, come with me. This must also be a hunting ground guard. Hugh O.F.A. sighed. Probably the gamekeeper before Hagrid. As for Hagrid, he is estimated to be just nine years old now and will not be able to enroll until two years later. Passing through the pitch black forest path. The one-eyed guard of the hunting ground brought a group of chattering children to the dark lake. By the lake, there are patches of small wooden boats parked. On the other side of the lake, a towering castle stands on a high mountain slope, with towering spires and windows twinkling under the starry sky. At this time, Hogwarts is almost the same as the original book except for the different people. System. Ding. Discovering the Wizard, S. Secret Realm, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Complete 50% exploration of the Secret Realm. You will receive, one, third of the spell fragments. One, third of the spell fragments contain unique energy. After obtaining three pieces, you can upgrade one of your spell abilities. Currently, two thirds of them are collected. Complete 100% exploration of the secret realm. You will gain the knowledge of the great god. The knowledge of a great deity is mysterious and unpredictable. Before possessing it, you had no idea of its possible power. Rare. Hover ignored the system's prompts. He looked at the castle with a stirring heart, feeling that his dream had come true. The gamekeeper jumped off the horse's back, picked up a bow and arrow, and lifted the oil lamp. Shouting loudly, four people on a boat, don't grab it. Quote. The children boarded the boat in a noisy manner. Miranda sat next to Hover, and two unfamiliar students sat opposite Hover, chatting and laughing. He breathed a sigh of relief as the haunted silver-haired girl did not follow, which was better than any news. The crowd settled down and the small boat automatically started moving in the black lake. The children next to them were pointing and pointing at the surrounding scenery, most of whom were extremely excited. Hover plunged his hand into the icy lake water. The clattering sound of water made him feel extremely comfortable. Suddenly, there was a slight stabbing pain in his fingers, and when he raised his hand, Hugh O.F.A. was startled. It's a small mermaid wrapped around his fingers, with a Thumbelina-like appearance, but a fish tail on its lower body. After being discovered, the little mermaid sprayed a water arrow on his face. Huofa quickly inserted his hand back into Black Lake. The mermaid left his finger. Miranda smiled and said, Scottish lake monsters, magical creatures that can become as big as humans when they reach adulthood. There are many here. Quote. Hover pursed his lips and didn't put his hand into the lake anymore. As we approached the castle, everyone held their breath. Only the sound of water remains in the air. Passing through several bridges and caves covered in dense ivy. Following a pitch black tunnel, it seemed to lead to the castle underground, eventually reaching a place similar to an underground dock. And then climbing up a piece of gravel and small pebbles on the ground. Arriving at the opposite shore of the lake, at the feet of Hogwarts. I don't know if it's his illusion, but this school is much larger than he imagined. 
The pitch black city walls are continuous and endless, and the highest towers seem to be almost inserted into the clouds. Walking to the door, Hover noticed some differences. Because he remembered in the original work that the gate of this castle was an oak door. But all the gates he saw now were engraved with black metal, carved with various strange patterns and texts. It looks very ancient and solemn. Has there been any unknown change during this half century? Hover felt his chin and thought to himself. The door automatically opened, revealing a luxurious marble staircase, and a group of people rushed in. The one-eyed old man on horseback dismounted at the doorstep and followed the new students. He reached out to stop the new student in the lobby and said, Wait here, don't talk. But his words didn't have much effect. A group of children gathered together, how could they not speak? Everyone is whispering and laughing. Hover also wanted to talk to Miranda, but she just closed her mouth and shook her head slightly, signaling Hover not to speak like others. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Eagle and Snake. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10. Eagle and Snake. Sure enough. After more than ten seconds. Silence. Quote. With a faint and aged voice, all the children whispering around quieted down. It seems like someone has pressed the volume off button. A thin old man with gray hair slowly turned out from behind the burning hall. He was wearing a bronze robe, with his hands behind him, and his eyes sharp as if he were a falcon. This is an unknown teacher from the school. Hoffa's breathing was somewhat suppressed, and for some reason, when he saw this old man, he felt that Hogwarts might be much stricter now than 50 years later. The old man walked slowly past the new students with his hands behind his back and said, You will learn a lot at Hogwarts, but first you need to learn not magic, but discipline. Quote, Wherever the old man's gaze scanned, the new students without exception lowered their heads. The separation ceremony is about to begin. It's undeniable which college you're assigned to. Follow me. Quote. The old man finished speaking very concisely without any intention of explaining to them further. He walked with one hand on his back and turned towards the hallway, his posture quite domineering. A group of freshmen, led by the elderly, walked through a gothic corridor several tens of meters high, with flames blazing every ten meters on the walls. A few students around whispered, Is that Vice Principal Adebe? It's so fierce, even more so than what is said in legend. Shush. As soon as they said a few words, someone quickly made them shut up. They looked intimidated and even a little hesitant. Adebe Goshik. It turned out to be him. Hover glanced at Miranda's calm face. So, is this old man her grandfather? He looks really strict. While thinking, Hover looked around at the environment. There are no ghosts walking around here. Only the footsteps of new students were quiet, and the oil-painted eyes on the wall slowly rotated with them, but most of them remained silent. Passing through the corridor, a group of freshmen arrived at Hogwarts Auditorium. The solemn and dimly lit auditorium is covered with a blue carpet on the ground. The voices around me were a little louder, but they were all very restrained in whispering. It's completely different from chatting and laughing freely on a train. This place is not as romantic as what is written in later novels, without hundreds or thousands of burning candles, and without warmly welcoming prefects. The lighting here is provided by the brazier. The walls around are covered with braziers, and as the freshmen walk a certain distance, the braziers light up, making the hall brighter. Above the ceiling dome, thousands of bright stars slowly rotate in the darkness. Like ancient and obscure astrology, profound and profound, serious and rigid. Hover looked at the classroom seat in the crowd, 
and in the middle of the seat was an old man with a white beard. His eyes were sinister, his figure was thin and weak, and his hair was half bald. Armando Dippert is currently the principal of Hogwarts. Just a glance at Hoffer confirmed that this guy was not a principal like Dumbledore at all. There was no kindness in his eyes, only scrutiny. It is said that one emperor, one courtier, no wonder the whole school is permeated with a sense of rules and order. Of course, Hover also saw Dumbledore, who was sitting on the left side of the faculty seat, whispering something to a chubby black-haired man next to him. Hover saw the fat man and immediately understood his identity. Slahorn is the dean of Slytherin College. The man who imparted the secret of soul-splitting to Voldemort returned to the same position more than 50 years later. Walking under a giant eagle statue in front of the faculty seat, Vice Principal Adebe Goshik turned around. Beside him is a blue padded high stool. There is a grey wrinkled hat on the stool. A range in a row. Professor Goshik, who was serious, said coldly. His voice was flat, but all the new students immediately followed orders and stood in a row. Professor Goshik then took out a long roll of parchment from his sleeve. Those who hear the name, come up and wear a branch hat. Quote, Akal and Mitt. A boy ran over and hurriedly put his hat on his head, and the branch hat immediately shouted. Gryffindor. Quote, a faint round of applause echoed from a table on the left, and these people were also quite restrained when applauding. Not as intense as described in later books. Alfred Black. Goshik continued to announce his name. This surname is very familiar to Hover. Blake. He is a member of the Sirius family. He looked up and saw a boy in a black robe with a cold expression separating from the crowd and sitting on a high stool. The sorting hat hesitated on his head for a long time, then assigned him to Slytherin. This black frowned as if he was still a bit unhappy. Hover watched the boy as he walked by, wondering what his relationship was with the future Sirius Black. Not long after Alfred left, Hover heard a familiar name again. Irene Prince. Prince. Aaron Prince. Half-blood Prince Snape his mother. Hover immediately lifted his head. That is a black-haired girl with a pale appearance. Greasy hair, many freckles around her nose, and a somewhat worried expression on her face. She nervously ran to the front of the sorting hat, which quickly assigned her to Slytherin. Hugh O.F.A. thought to himself that he had long eyes today. The people present here are all the ancestors of future celebrities. He even wondered if he could become Snape's father if he had just soaked up that Eileen Prince. Hugh O.F.A. quickly shook his head, feeling that it was not good to think about such a devilish question in such a serious auditorium. Moreover, Eileen is not particularly beautiful. The speed of the branch hat is sometimes very fast and sometimes very slow. A fast person should be ready in a few seconds. Some people waited for a minute, and during this time, Everyone in the hall waited silently without any sound. The crowd stepped forward one by one, except for some later big family surnames. It is difficult for Hover to hear familiar people during this branch ceremony. Suddenly, as Goshik shouted, Agria S. Draces, a blue-eyed silver-haired girl walked out of the crowd and sat expressionless on a high stool. Hoffa's eyes widened. Originally, her name was Agria S. Draces. What a stinky and long name. As soon as the branch hat touched her silver hair, she shouted loudly, Ravenclaw. Damn it. Hover shook his head secretly. Unfortunately, he wasn't the sorting hat. Otherwise he would have assigned this goods to Slytherin. Agria put down her sorting hat walked down the steps, and gave Hover a mocking smile as she passed by. 
as if mocking his judgment on the train. Hoffer thought to himself that if he were Harry Potter, this guy would definitely be a character like Malfoy. Tom Mavoro Riddle. A name spoken by the vice principal interrupted Hoffer's thoughts. He lifted his head, wanting to witness this historic moment. Tom, who was tall and cheerful, separated from the crowd and slowly walked to the front of the branch hat. He seemed calm, but Hoffer keenly observed that his hands were tightly clenched, and the veins on the back of his hands were bulging. Obviously, I am very excited inside. Only one second. Branch hat. Slytherin. The rightmost table erupted with applause, three points hotter than the applause of the others. In this serious atmosphere, this is already very difficult. In less than an afternoon on the train, Tom Riddle gained the favor of most people in Slytherin. The boy put down his sorting hat, and Hover actually saw a relieved expression on his face. It's really strange. Voldemort also has this kind of emotion. After more than a dozen people were separated, Vice Principal Goshik finally announced his name expressionlessly. Hoffer Bark. Quote, Miranda gave Hover a slight push and Hover emerged from the crowd. No one else responded. For them, it was just an ordinary name to the extreme. But one person widened their eyes. Agria, who was sitting in the corner of Ravenclaw's table, was originally expressionless and lacked interest. But when she saw Hover come out, she was a bit puzzled at first. Subsequently, her face immediately turned pale, and a wave of humiliated anger rushed to her forehead. She punched the table, causing the nearby Ravenclaw people to look sideways. Damn it. Quote. Agria gritted her teeth and squeezed out two words. She only then realized that this boy was not really Miller Goshik. But it's called Hoffa Bark. In her opinion, this Bark classmate's disregard for her on the train was the greatest insult to her. Of course, Hover was unaware that his actions on the train had offended a Ravenclaw. He sat on a high stool and nervously put on his hat. It may sound casual, but at this moment, he couldn't help but feel nervous. As soon as he put on his hat, the branch hat sighed lightly in his ear. I haven't seen such a difficult to distinguish student in a long time. Brave. Capable. Not bad-hearted, intelligent, and naturally not lacking in ambition. Well, it seems that all four colleges are quite suitable for you. Hugh OFA is speechless. Can this be considered as a way of cursing me for not being distinctive and disappearing from the crowd? The passage of time, minute by second, is longer than anyone else's procrastination. After three full minutes, Hover was still sitting on the chair. Professor Goshik, who was standing aside, glanced at Hover more. The branch hat kept muttering in Hoffer's ear. First of all, exclude Hufflepuff. You're not very suitable there. Secondly, I want to exclude Slytherin. Although you have ambition, it's not enough. It's not up to Slytherin's standards. Hoffer's breathing is a bit rapid. Sorting hat. So it's only Gryffindor and Ravenclaw left. Hmm. Let me think about it. Hover is a bit nervous. Ravenclaw. If it weren't for the past, but since meeting that silver-haired woman, he really doesn't want to be in the same college with that kind of person. Suddenly, he had a sudden idea. He remembered that when Harry Potter wore the sorting hat, it was also difficult to choose between the hats. Regarding Gryffindor and Slytherin, but in the end, Harry Potter made his own choice and chose Gryffindor. So Hover also learned something. He muttered in his mind. Don't go to Ravenclaw. Don't go to Ravenclaw. Don't go to Ravenclaw. So, the sorting hat shouted out in a voice that shattered the sky, Ravenclaw. End of this chapter.